name's Robin Jones. I spent this summer in Beirut, Lebanon. I was working with Al Jumharia, which is an online media and journalism platform founded by Syrian writers, activists, and intellectuals in 2012 to address central political concerns and issues of human rights emerging out of the 2011 Syrian revolution and the ensuing war. Uh, my role in the organization was to assist with their English language platform. Uh, before discussing my work, I'd like to speak a little bit about the current political and human rights situation in Syria. Um, I'll just note that this was written before uh, the most recent Turkish uh, invasion of Kurdish areas in northern Syria or Rojava. Um, so the narrative of the Syrian regime suggests that the war in Syria has reached a close. Uh, and as such, the regime will stay in place and it is time for dissident Syrians to accept its rule for refugees to return to the country, and for international and regional powers to normalize relations with the regime and pump money into the country's reconstruction, a process which will be led by the state. It may be true that the armed revolt has largely been suppressed and that the regime has retaken vast swaths of formerly opposition-held territory, but in another sense, the war is far from over. In areas which the regime has retaken, Syrians who have refused to live under its rule and face possible arrest or conscription uh, have been sent en masse to Idlib in the Northwest. Uh, Idlib remains under opposition control and great tensions exist there between hardline Islamist militants and democratic activists who continue to hold street protests against both extremists and the regime. Over 1,000 civilians have been killed in Syria's north between May and August of this year a vast majority attributable to regime airstrikes. And the threat of a definitive final regime attack looms. Yet aside from limited legal efforts to prosecute war criminals, international attention has largely shifted away from Syria. And both Western and neighboring countries are adopting increasingly hostile stances toward refugees from the conflict now that the country is supposedly stable for returnees. So this is the political backdrop of my work uh, at Al Jumharia. Um, the platform's central need was for an editor to work on a set of unpublished articles by young Syrian writers uh, located both inside Syria and in neighboring countries who were not able to develop their work in journalism and in the social sciences due to the war. The articles were originally written in Arabic uh, and I was working with rough English translations uh, in order to bring them to a publishable level. So I want to tell you a bit briefly about each. So the first piece that I worked on was by a writer with personal experience traversing the Syrian-Turkish border. It dealt with changes in Turkish policy towards Syrian refugees attempting to cross, how the open door policy pursued by the Erdogan government in the early days of the uprising gave way to an increasingly hostile approach. The second piece was a reflection by a female Syrian writer on conversations among women in the United Nations refugee camp in Jordan where she lived. In her recounting of the women's hopes and dreams, the camp emerges as a liminal space where both gender desires and political aspirations could be voiced. The third piece was an article on incarceration in Syria by the daughter of a former political prisoner who would later be imprisoned herself. It takes up prisoners' perennial wait for arbitrary amnesty decisions under an authoritarian state and their feelings of complicity and loss of identity in asking for mercy from their captors despite their innocence. Uh, the fourth piece that I worked on was by a Syrian living in southern Lebanon, a region that is politically dominated by Hezbollah, uh, a Shia movement and militia which is currently fighting in Syria in defense of the Assad regime. The piece describes the sectarianized political climate of fear faced by primarily Sunni Syrian refugees uh, in southern Lebanon, profiled as supporters of radical Islamists uh, and the demands upon them to keep quiet and to assimilate. Finally, I edited a profile of a resident of Ruta, a Damascus suburb, who joined the uprising and became part of an armed opposition faction. Uh, the piece deals with his internal tension while deciding whether to reign in his hometown under regime rule or to face expulsion to an opposition-held area. In the end, he remains and is conscripted into the ranks of the Syrian army. I also had the chance to publish a couple of pieces of my own during my internship with Al Jumharia. So I wrote a review of a book by Salwa Ismail, uh, The Rule of Violence, 
which considers uh, the role that violence plays in the Syrian regime's government's strategies under the Assads. I also wrote an article uh, on regime propaganda strategies that dealt with videos publicized on uh, the state social media outlets depicting dance parties in cities like Aleppo and Damascus taking place uh, at the height of the war. In addition to my editing and writing, I had the chance to work with a journalist and a photojournalist on a research project based in the city of Tripoli in northern Lebanon. The project sought to capture the complex and contradictory relations of animosity and solidarity that shape interactions between Syrians and Lebanese citizens within Tripoli as an urban space. To put things in context, there are approximately 1.5 million Syrian refugees uh, living in Lebanon, registered and unregistered. There is a climate of racism and panic about Syrians taking jobs, which is spurred on by the rhetoric of politicians. Uh, this culminated in a crackdown on foreign labor uh, that occurred while I was in Lebanon during the summer. So for this project, I took down key details from reports about Tripoli and the specific conditions faced by Syrians there. I went to the city alongside the journalists to record interviews and provide assistance, and I did copy editing for the piece. Reflecting on my experience with al uh, one thing that I did notice was strong support for a framework based on human rights among Syrian activists, including those familiar with academic and other critiques of this framework's possible limitations. In one conversation, for instance, a coworker noted that some critiques of how the rights approach can be tied up with histories of colonialism and, and empire may be inattentive to the ways in which activists and intellectuals in the post-colonial context call upon or draw upon the rights framework. Another thing of note was the deficit of international attention on human rights abuses in Syria as compared to earlier in the conflict. Why do certain atrocities, like those that occurred in Aleppo in 2016, receive extensive attention, whereas others, like those that are ongoing in Idlib, are largely ignored? A degree of oversaturation with images of violence in Syria seems to have numbed many observers to the brutality. The perception among coworkers at al Jumhuria was that publics in the West, including progressive-minded ones, seem to be paying little attention to Syria today. An additional impediment to human rights in the Syrian context, like in many other countries, is the internationalization of the discourse of the war on terror. The Assad regime has sought throughout the war to portray all opposition to its rule as terrorism appealing to popular Western notions about Muslim politics in order to legitimize its own governance. All too often, international powers seem willing to suspend human rights ideals as soon as the word terrorism is uttered. In the case of Syria, Russia, the US, and regional powers now seem to have converged around the regime's narrative of terrorism as being central to the war. I'll speak a little bit about what's next with regards to my own work. So the article that emerged uh, from the Tripoli research will soon be published uh, on al Jumhuria in both English and in Arabic. I am also hoping to do further writing for al Jumhuria in the future. Uh, I'm currently taking a practitioner course um, with a foreign correspondent and a New York Times Magazine contributing writer uh, at NYU's Kevorkian Center uh, for New Year's and Studies. Uh, I'm working on an article which deals with themes of political violence and mental health uh, in the Syrian context. I'm also in the early stages of my master's thesis project, which deals with the history of the Syrian leftist movement uh, and tensions and convergences between Marxist and communist politics on the one hand and an approach based on political rights on the other. At the end of the summer, I briefly had the chance to go to Berlin, where I met with one of the founders of al Jumhuria, a former member of an opposition communist party in Syria, later a political prisoner, and today an intellectual who straddles the traditions of leftist organizing and human rights. I also met with a Syrian human rights lawyer with extensive knowledge of the history of the rights movement in the local context. I'm gonna be returning to Berlin in January on a fellowship from NYU's Global Research Initiative to do more structured interviews uh, for my thesis. I greatly look forward to that research and to sharing what emerges from it with you. Thanks very much.